What happened uh, from Obama's time and now the, uh, the, the Biden administration in terms of uh, routing out uh, generals and, and uh, a leadership that might uh, challenge the, the Democrat administration? I think one of the most instructive things ever said, truthful for that matter, by a politician in the history of our country, was something Barack Obama said just before his first presidential election. He said, we're five days away from fundamentally transforming the United States of America. And that fundamental transformation was conducted in his two terms. And what I think of as his third term under Joe Biden with horrific effects on many of our institutions, uh, but one of the most insidious, one of the most dangerous, quite frankly, is the degree to which the purging of our military, the brainwashing or indoctrination, um, the, well, for want of a better term, fundamental transformation of the military is leaving us, I think, poorly led in the armed forces, uh, alienating the people that we need to have serve in a voluntary force, and uh, general officers who are simply not the kind of people that we need to have, especially if, God forbid, the Chinese Communist Party decides this is the moment to go to a shooting war with our country. As Don Rumsfeld used to say, you go to war with the military you have, or the army, and this one, uh, alas, is as a direct result of the purges and the wokeification and the masks, well, masks, the vaccine mandates most especially, is, uh, is I fear, just not up to the job. It's, it certainly seems as though it's not likely to deter the Chinese, which is the first thing we needed to do. And then if deterrence fails, Obviously, we're going to need its help in defeating these guys. You, not be up to that either. you wrote a book called War Footing? Yes. How long ago? My recollection is it was 2007. So, how, how prepared are we, as the United States and its allies, for uh, a kinetic war or even uh, a cyber war against China? You know, there are those who say that our cyber capabilities are very robust. I can't judge. But my guess is that they're not as robust as we need them to be against people who take this very seriously with, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of cyber warriors. And, you know, there's a line that uh, is used by, I think, the law enforcement types. Uh, they say there are two kinds of companies in America. There are companies that have been attacked by Chinese cyber warfare and penetrated, and companies that don't know they've been attacked and penetrated by cyber warriors from China. So that is an indication that even that specialized area is not up to scratch. And I think the rest of the military is in even worse shape, unfortunately, at the moment. Uh, partly as a result of exhaustion from the use that has been made of them in successive wars elsewhere, uh, and partly because of the fact that, um, as you know, we've been discussing, they are now bearing the burden, the costs of having been deliberately underfunded, uh, having their procurements of new weapon systems, their research and development into more exotic and advanced ones, all now, unfortunately, sort of uh, causing the ch proverbial chickens to come home to roost. They're just not ready for an adversary that has been preparing for this kind of war against us for decades and has modernized their forces and expanded them. And um, 
I think has got a, a sense of mission that they need to take us down and use the military for that purpose. Where can people follow your uh, publishing? I know you have a podcast, but where can people read you on a regular basis? We have a subscription uh, to a daily radio commentary that I do that gives you the transcript of it. Um, most of the work that I publish, and as well as the videos and radio show, are uh, at securingamerica.tv. And I would commend them to go there as a resource. Other great stuff is at the Center for Security Policies website, securefreedom.org, and the Committee on the Present Danger of China's website, presentdangerchina.org.